All right, guys, welcome to another KevCam Night class tonight. Uh, tonight I have Steve Welsh helping us out to uh, answer any questions that come up for you guys. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, attending today. We're looking forward to getting together again. Absolutely. Um, for those of you guys that are new, um, we use uh, GoToWeb <clears throat> excuse me, GoToWebinar. And I apologize for being gone last week. I was uh, pretty well under the weather, so I'm still uh, battling a little bit here. But uh, I apologize for last week, but we're back in action. Um, but what I was saying is, uh, for those of you guys that are new to the night class, um, we use GoToWebinar. And what that does, it puts all you guys in mute um, just to kind of eliminate any background noise. But if you guys do have any questions, in which we want you to, to have as many as possible, there is a questions panel and uh, go ahead and type your question in there and we will get your questions answered right away and if Steve can't answer them you know right away he'll just interrupt me and uh, we'll stop right there and answer you guys' questions for you guys so um, this class is solely dedicated to you guys so um, any ideas suggestions anything like that please please send those over to me um, getting some I just got one from Jeff at uh, Turbine Blade, so he will be, let me throw my splash screen up here, he will be getting a uh, t-shirt and hat, and uh, do we have, I'm just going through my list of people we have in here, oh, I don't see, okay, I was, I was going to ping one of the guys to see if they got their hat and shirt yet, but um, yeah, so if you guys have any um ideas, suggestions, send those over to me. Um, I will put my email address right now into the uh, chat log for you guys. Cam.com, if I can type. I'll stress it too, we really want to make these as valuable as possible. So if you have anything maybe uh, you want more information on or whatnot, run it past us and there, there's a really good chance we'll fold it into a class. Absolutely, and with all of your guys' ideas that I've gotten, these classes are uh, can be going on for quite a while. So. Definitely, uh, we look at each one of your guys' ideas. Now, if you guys <clears throat> uh, submit an idea and uh, we can't make a class off it, what we'll do is we will make a video of it, do a recording for you guys, and put that on uh, our YouTube channel. So if I open up, um, if you guys type in under YouTube KevCam, I will pull up, or Solid Cam University, um, I will uh, put the link in there for you guys also. And definitely hit the subscribe button. That way, all the new videos that come up um, you guys will get notified on. So we have um, we did a couple just during the week this week. Do how to do, use the uh, machine options and I work offset and I number of fixture offset. Uh, tips and tricks for working area. And then last week's class with Brendan and Ken going over uh, HSR and like I said, got a bunch of videos in here um, going through everything that you can think of. Um, and for those of you guys that are a little new to uh, YouTube when you guys get to my channel so instead of trying to view through all the videos we have in here if you guys just click the little search icon right here this will refine your search down and make it a lot easier to find everything so um, definitely use that option right there so all right with that being said um, we'll get going with tonight's class we are going to be covering HSM um, HSM is very, very large and lots and lots of stuff in there. So we're going to kind of take these um, for the next couple weeks and uh, take them in different little sections of the HSM. So tonight we'll be covering uh, HSM constant Z and hybrid constant Z. So, so what I'm going to do here is I have a part, and this is actually a part that you guys have in your file. Um, if you guys open up your solid cam and go to see user public public documents solid cam uh, solid cam 2016 user and SolidWorks examples this example will be in there for you guys so what I'm gonna do is kind of walk you through this part and then I have three other parts that we are going to program live for you guys to get a better grasp on the HSM so there is tons and tons and tons of stuff inside HSM um, so if I'm if I brush over something too fast, guys, please let me know right away, and uh, we'll we'll go back over that. Um, like I said, there's a lot of options in there to get a the exact tool path that you guys are looking for, and uh, I'm going to try to cover each and every one of those options for you guys tonight. So, okay, 
So what I'm going to do here is, oh, we do have one. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Steve. Um, yep. This one right here is just, uh, we have tapered walls, a um, little bit of a, a, another taper within a taper here. Um, our walls actually on this surface are tapered. Um, and then we have a flat floor down here in the bottom with a, I think these are also tapered uh, at the bottom here. So I'm going to kind of walk you guys through this particular part here, and then we'll actually get programming live on a part for you guys, and then that's when we can definitely get into the, uh, the question side of things. So um, you'll see right here, we already used HSR to rough out uh, everything in there, um, and we did a HSM rest, and we'll be covering the rest uh, in one of the other classes. But let's get into the constant Z machining. So um, starting at the top, your target will automatically be defined for you in there. And that's what that target is going to be doing is it's going to be pulling from the target when you guys started your CAM project. Now, in that target, when you guys, let me just open it up for you guys. In here, uh, this is metric, by the way, um, we have a facet tolerance of 0.1. The facet tolerance is basically this part is made up of a bunch of triangles, and the tighter that's the smaller that number is, the smaller the triangles are, the more accurate the model is going to be. But um, let's say that you guys want to have a tighter tolerance just for your HSM and then a looser tolerance for the rest of your stuff. So you can set up your target tolerance uh, fairly loose, but then when you come to do a 3D path, if you want to change your tolerance, you can actually click the facet tolerance right here and tighten that up even more. So that's what the facet tolerance. And that would be for a better, better finish, perhaps. Yep. yep absolutely. You're gonna get uh, it, it just more accuracy of the of the part. I mean, we're talking, you know, 0 0.02 millimeters, uh, which is very very small number. Um, let's see if we do 0 0.02. I mean, we're talking seven tenths right here. So uh, very very tight tolerance. Now, you can also add what's called the microfilleting. And what the microfilleting does is on those triangles, you can actually have rounded edges on the triangles. Now, honestly, guys, out of all the years I've been using solid cam since 2007, I've never used this option. Um, but it basically will take those triangles and round, put little micro fillets on, on those triangles. So, like I said, this one, you know, I don't use very often, and, you know, I'm going to try to do, you know, if, for those of you guys that have been with the class for a while here, you guys kind of know that I kind of teach you what I, I personally think um, is the best way to go about it. So, when I say I don't use this, um, you know, definitely the option is there for you guys to use it. It's just something that I don't use on a uh, regular basis or ever, so. Okay, moving down here, apply fillets. Now, what this does is... Um, it will apply fillets kind of like with the, the picture shown right here. Now, if I want to do a basic fillet, you know, I can just put my tool diameter and quarter radius in there, and it's going to put a fillet in there. Now, if I want to contain it just to um, apply the specific fillets just in a specific area, what you guys want to do is turn on the advanced feature, and then you can come in here and chain the areas that you just want the fillet to be applied to. So you guys don't have to do the fillet of the whole surface or just, you know, you guys can select it down to a specific area versus doing the whole entire area. So, Tool um, for this particular run, we're using a 12 millimeter uh, bull nose end mill. Uh, constraint boundaries. Now in here, um, quite a bit in here, um, you can do a create an automatic one, which is basically going to take your whole entire part. So if you guys were... Um, when, when, once we get into the combined constant in Z and linear, we will use the automatic one. But for this particular one, I just want it to stay within a, a specific area. So what I'm going to do is create a, ma a manual boundary, and then just chain off the boundary that you want to contain it to. Um, now in here, you guys can do select faces, uh, kind of like HSS. You guys can do a boundary box, which is kind of the same thing as user defined. You can do a silhouette. Uh, shallow areas, uh, theoretical rest areas. Um, honestly, guys, out of everything in here, I've only used the 
user-defined areas, the select faces, and the uh, rest areas. So, um, but there is options in there for you guys to pick multiple different ways to select your geometry, per se. So, now with that bounding area, let me just do a modify and I can show you guys here. You'll see I have a, a green box. Um, that's my area. Now with that green box, I can tell it to stay centered to that or go external. So my tool is actually going outside of that area by the full tool diameter right now, or I'm sorry, half tool diameter, or I can put an offset in there and tell it to go even farther past. So if you guys are looking to kind of do an extend on your work surface area, then you would want to turn this to external and then tell it how far out you want it to extend out. Um, you can say just to keep it internal so that cutter does not go outside uh, your bounding area. Um, you can do centered, kind of like what we have selected right here. So the, the, the center of my tool will get up to the, the center of my bounding box. And then we have tangent also. So any questions so far just with the constraint boundaries? All right, so we're gonna dive a little bit deeper now. Okay, so, and then this, all this stuff is gonna be pretty much the same for all these drop downs right here. So all these are basically gonna have all the same options that we're kind of going through here. So these two pages right here might get, uh, over the next couple weeks, uh, obviously I'm gonna be kind of covering each one of these, but um, for the guys that are watching, these might get a little old as I cover these, but I'll try to zip through them as, as fast as I can for you guys. But, so under the passes, basically how do you want your tool path? Do we want a wall offset? Do we want a floor offset? Now, our tolerance right here is the tolerance of the tool path. Now, we talked about the facet tolerance of the model. Now, how tight of a tolerance do we want the tool path to be? Um, like I said, we, we are set pretty tight right now, but you do have the option to crank up that tolerance. Um, you know, usually that's gonna be unchecked and you can actually take the slider bar and move it up, or you can just hit the, the check tolerance right there and type in whatever tolerance that you're looking for. So, and that's gonna, you know, kind of more or less be the accuracy of your, your cut, um, how, how it's following along with the SOLIDWORKS model. Now your step down. Now this is one that's gonna change a little bit from constant Z to constant Z hybrid. So to kind of cover what constant Z does is constant Z is more meant for your vertical walls. It works the best you know, between 90 and 30 degrees of, of a wall. So like more of your vertical walls. Now I can set over here my angle range. So maybe I just want it to go down to 30 degrees because I know when it gets down to zero degrees, I'm not gonna get the best finish because it's doing a constant Z uh, step down. So, um, so linear is gonna be more for your flat surfaces. Constant Z is gonna be more for your straight up and down. So if you kind of remember that as you know a rule of thumb. Now, when we go to cover the constant Z hybrid, what that is gonna do is it's gonna take that vertical wall and combine it with the flat floor. So like on a particular part like this, we won't actually use a hybrid on this part, but this would be a great part. So we have a, a very vertical wall right here, and then we also have a flat floor right here. So we could use as our hybrid. It's gonna get a real nice finish on this, uh, on this vertical wall here, but then when we get over to the flat, it's gonna do a nice finish also. And I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll kind of cover that here shortly. Um, your step down. How much do you, do you want to go down per pass? Uh, Stepping down in the in the Z is basically what's going on there. Uh, your Z top, Z bottom, uh, pretty basic there. Now this Z bottom can be set to the bottom of your part. HSM will not gouge your part. Um, so just kind of remember that. Like right now, if I had to click on Z bottom, um, we're gonna show that number right there, but you know, technically I can just click on the whole bottom of the part and it's gonna go, you know, exactly where where I tell it to go. Um, not gouging into the part. And then you guys have uh, deltas for each one also. Now, kind of talked about your angle range right here. 
Now, contact areas. Do you just want to machine the contact areas or do you want to machine out the entire area? So what I mean by that is right now, you can get a better view here, we have this outside perimeter chain right now. So by turning on the contact areas, and this is actually on by default, it's only going to machine the walls as we're going around. Now, if I turned off my contact area, it's going to machine everything, kind of like in a pocket operation, starting from the center and working away our way out. But since we already roughed out that material, we really don't need to worry about, uh, you know, machining that whole area because we'll just be machining air. Okay, point reduction. Fit arcs. Fit arcs is going to take every little uh, 3D line segment is going to put into little tiny line segments, or we can turn them into arc segments. So right here, you'll see in the picture, I'll try to get it so it stays on there, there you go. You'll see we're gonna kind of do a bunch of jagged, um, and it's following the contour of that surface with uh, basically uh, straight line movements. Now if I turn my fit arcs on, what it does is it takes those straight line movements and turns them into arcs for you guys. Um, so this is going to eliminate some of the jerkiness of the machine. And there are going to be times that you're going to want to turn off your fit arcs, uh, per se, like a, um, you know, maybe if you're just doing a, you know, a straight flat area, not going around anything. Um, trying to think of anywhere else you would not use it, but, you know, you, you'll get you'll get a good tool path no matter what, but by turning on the fit arcs, you might get a little bit nicer, uh, a smoother uh, machine flow uh, versus the line segments. Now you also have a tolerance for that arc, so you can say you know uh, do a tolerance of 0 0.002 millimeters, which I mean we're talking. 10 millions here in inches. And then you can, you guys also have a slide bar down here at the bottom. So um, you can either type it in or you can just use the slide bar and move it around to, you know, what you best fit. Um, a lot of times, guys, I honestly I don't even turn on the tolerance. I'll just leave the fit arcs on as default. Um, and as we get programming on our parts here, you'll see a lot of the default numbers or stuff that's checked or unchecked is usually the best strategy. Um, but obviously, you know, when we're getting into 3D milling, there's so many different ways to fine tune your tool path. Um, so, okay. One thing I forgot to mention is some of you guys might be looking at this and be like, I haven't seen all those options before. Right now, I currently have my advanced turned on. Um, so if I turn off my advanced, you'll see my point reduction gets taken away. Um, looks like that's it for this one. You'll get a lot more options with your advanced turned on. Um, if you're a little bit new to the HSM, I would definitely recommend just leaving it off for right now, um, just because there is so much inside of HSM, it might get just a little bit overwhelming. Um, so you'll see right now, we just have passes and the adaptive step down versus if I turn it on, now we have smoothing, you have to step down and it passes all that stuff in there. So, Okay, so the smoothing rate here and the smoothing rate here are basically the same thing. Um, now, you'll see if we're just doing a single line segment, you guys will notice like if you guys are doing like a engraving, you'll get the little, uh, kind of like what the, the S is showing right here, kind of jerkiness uh, moves. Now, if I turn the smoothing on, it smooths out everything. So kind of like the point reduction uh, put, or uh, using the fit arcs, um, but it just kind of smooths out stuff. And that's basically the same thing going right here. So we can do it, turn on our smoothing, and then we can have a max radius and a profile tolerance of everything that's going on there. So you can actually specify it to, you know, the max radius, you know, set to 0.6, uh, a profile tolerance, set to one, uh, 0.12 millimeters. Okay, adaptive step down. Now, adaptive step down, what it does is, let's say we have, we told it, oh, what do we have right here? We have a step down of 0.15. Now what's gonna happen is, as this is coming down at 0.15, and let's say it gets to about right here, and it's only got 
0.25 or 0 0.025 left on there, it's actually going to skip that. So by turning the adaptive step down on, it's going to insert extra passes and get right down to that surface. Um, so that way, if you're, you know, like I said, when you're doing equal step downs, it's basically breaking that equal step downs when it gets down to the specific floor that you told it, and then it just uh, will add additional steps in there. So, and then you can set up, you know, what your precision is and your profile step or a scallop height for that. Um, this one is a little bit tricky, but you know, like I said, it, and I'm trying to explain it as best as I can for you guys, but you know, as we're doing our 150 thou step down, um, it gets down to the last and it's obviously it's going to be less than 150 thou. So what it'll do is it'll automatically insert those in there. Now the optimize Z level is when you, you can break it into multiple steps. So last cuts to leave even, so it's always going to be defaulted to five. Um, and at kind of the same thing as that, um, you know, automatically inserting your step downs, but it's going to optimize the Z level for like a specific number of cuts. So, okay, edit passes. Um, this is where you want to, if you want, um, you want to work right on your surface and you want to offset your surface. So we can put a thickness area, um, you can do an axial thickness, basically kind of offsetting it plus or minus which way. Um, and then you can also do a gouge check while it's linking. And the linking is your between passes, I guess you would say. Um, now with profile, face mill, all that stuff before, you know, linking is kind of your lead in, lead off. Kind of doing the same thing right here. Linking is when it's kind of going from one cut to another cut. And you can either have that retract up, stay down, and we'll get over that into the link in here. Okay, so in the link section, um, climb cut, uh, pretty you know self-explanatory right here. You can link by your your Z level. So maybe you guys have multiple pockets, and what you want to do is keep going down at a steady dip. So instead of you know doing one area skipping over and doing the other area and then skipping back and forth. Um, that's what this basically does right here. So if I, let's just say, you know, I have a pocket right here, a pocket right here. Um, it will just work on this pocket by itself, get it all the way down to size, and then jump over to this pocket right here. Okay. Um, refurbishment. This one I had to look up a little bit. Uh, what it does is it takes your little tiny, let's say you have a bunch of little tiny line segments in your toolpath. On this particular one, we don't, but let's say you guys have a bunch of little tiny line, uh, toolpath lines in there. By putting that on there, what it does is it takes all those short passes and turns them into one long pass. Um, so you can set your minimum pass length as 0 .02. So you know, anything smaller than a 0 .02 is going to turn it into, instead of going from a feed rate to a rapid to a feed rate, it's going to take anything that is this size and turn it into one long constant line um, to kind of smooth out your, your machine and how it runs. Safety, um, safety distance to stay away from, you know, the max stock thickness. Um, Honestly, I've never played with it, what two of these, the refurbishment or the safety right here, um, something that I've just never had to run across. Um, but you can kind of see in the picture what it's going on there. And that's a nice thing with the uh, with all this stuff here is a lot of these areas have pictures uh, for you guys to kind of show what's going on uh, or what you're about to click on there. So. Okay, retracts. You can do start from a home point, return from a home point. You guys can set your home points. So if I turn this on, you guys can actually put your numbers in there. Um, the optimized Z level, kind of like what we talked about before, you know, when it gets to a certain level, um, this one is, you know, are you going to 
optimize it and just stay going across, or are you going to come up to the part clearance level? Um, like I said, a lot of the stuff is defaulted um, on already. So like I said, a lot of stuff uh, I wouldn't bother changing, but you do have the option there for you guys. So we don't, we, that's the biggest thing is we don't want you guys to be locked out of anything. So ramping, how are we getting onto the material? Um, we can do, you know, zigzag. Um, right now we're actually doing a, a helix ramp, but you can do a profile ramp. You can do a plunge ramp, just like you guys can do with like a pocketing operation. Um, so you can set your ramp height, uh, ramp angle, and uh, you can put approach points in there of where you want it to ramp in and ramp out. Um, so a nice feature there. Strategies. Staying on the surface, how far do you want it to stay on the surface before it actually switches over to a rapid movement? So um, we have 1.9 millimeters and stay down with 18. So it's just uh, your your ramp, um, I'm sorry, your your rapid areas is kind of where this kind of comes into factor. Um, a lot of times I'll just leave this as default unless I really have a lot of rapid movements in there. And usually if I do have a lot of rapid movements, I'm going to come over to my retracts, which I'll cover here next. But um, you can stay along the surface with a straight line. You can do it with a ramp. Um, so when it comes back over, we're doing a ramp at 5 degrees, kind of as what we're showing here in the picture. You can do a tangential ramp or tri trim to ramp advance. I'm not sure what that does. I'll have to look into that for you guys here. But... Um, like I said, another one that uh, don't use very often here, so I'm trying to give you guys my, my best opinion on it, so won't even bother touching it. Okay, so here is your retracts. Um, you know, your clearance area, minimum uh, rapid length, uh, clear surface by, so if you need to clear an area, uh, how far do you want it to go up? Um, your curls, you know, what radius do you want on those? You know, those areas, like kind of what we're showing here in the picture, uh, so your, your curl up, your curl down radius. Um, uh, kind of these two kind of go hand in hand right here with your smoothing of it. Um, your smoothing is, you know, instead of doing straight lines, um, you can actually have a radius in there. And uh, a lot of times I always leave this the shortest route just because, you know, time is money and we want to go with the shortest row possible. But if you guys do have some uh, maybe areas that are really sticking out, some clamps that are sticking out really high or some bolts that are sticking out really high, definitely do the, you know, the full retract option right here. <clears throat> okay, leads. Um, you have different extensions that you guys can add in there, like ramp out. More, this is more of your, your kind of your clearance stuff that we're kind of going over right here. So your passes are going to be where the guts of everything are, um, how you want the toolpath to look. Your link, kind of like, you know, profile, all those other operations is your kind of your lead in and lead off, if you th just think of them that way. So um, we can do machine, the fitting for machine the whole pass, uh, minimum trimming. You can actually set a maximum trimming distance in there for you guys. Um, basic approach. Honestly, guys, I really don't touch this area a lot right here. Um, I just kind of leave with what's default, but there is the option to dig into this more advanced right here. So um, definitely if you guys have the need for it, I haven't ran into anybody that has, but uh, the option is there for you guys to, you know, to change up your leads, lead in, lead offs, and all that stuff. Um, your vertical leads, though, you do have the option to change those. So as it's leading in, leading off radius, um, you can do a horizontal leads, um, you know, ramp height, um, you know, ramp angle, lead out angle. So it's basically, you know, all this right here from, you know, your leads, retracts, and even your strategy is basically, let me just show you guys here. is basically coming down to your link section right here. So, you know, to, to dummy it down, make it a little easier for you guys to understand, you got your lead in, lead off, your arc, 
you got your extension, um, arc angles, all that stuff is basically what we just covered with the HSM there. Okay, so let's open that back up here. Okay, motion control, uh, just for your four axis stuff right here. Um, you know, not much going on right here. You can do approximate arcs by lines if you need line segments. And then you have your miscellaneous parameters in here. Um, maybe you need a, um, and this is gonna change for every post processor out there, but a lot of them are gonna have the M00. So at the end of this operation, maybe I just wanna check to make sure my tool is still there or check the finish or whatnot, you guys can turn on your M00 there. Any questions with what is inside HSM, just kind of going through the settings of everything. Let's see, does the auto insert passes repeat and air cut? Auto passes, automatically insert passes. That's under, Smoothing. Are you talking about the this one right here, uh, John? Yes. Okay. So what John is asking is, if I do the uh, the auto passes, is it going to be cutting air? No. What it's going to do is it's going to take those. Um, right now we have a, um, a step down of you know 150 uh, 0.15 millimeters. It's going to break up that 155, so that last 155 millimeters or less is just going to break it down into smaller step downs as it's coming approaching this you know this bottom floor right here. So um, you will not get any air cutting with HSM long as you have the contact areas turned on. So hopefully that answers your question, John. Any other questions, guys? Because definitely, if, if, if I'm confusing you or if you have a question on it, please let me know. Because like I said, there is a lot here. And I mean, we're already uh, a half hour into it and we haven't even got to uh, program a part yet. So, so definitely ask away. So, so it doesn't have, no. Uh, what I did is on this particular part, John, is I already uh, roughed out all, everything. So if I come into my roughing operation right here, everything's already been roughed out, leaving a 0.5 millimeter on the floor and, and the wall. So um, now you guys can use HSM to rough out, but like I said, that's gonna where you're gonna wanna turn on your, um, or uncheck your contact area, so it'll machine everything. So great question, John. Any other questions, guys? Okay, so for this particular one right here, um, if we just do a modify, I can show you. Basically what I wanna do is machine just this area right here. So this surface going all the way around that little bit of a taper area. Um, so if I just do a simulate here, and you'll see now what I've, pre or what's previously been roughed out here, hit the play button, and we're getting that taper on the wall right there working our way down. Now, the only way it knew not to go all the way down to the entire bottom is in the the uh, levels area. So I told it the upper and the lower, and that's in your passes. I told it to do a, you know, uh, five millimeter going down. So, and that's why I didn't go any farther down. If I would have clicked on the bottom of the part, then it would go and do all the walls right here. So that's uh, constant Z. Um, now, if you guys, this is a, a little bit of a tip and trick inside SolidCAM. If you guys are working on this operation um, and you guys want to go to your next one, there's no need to close out of this. Um, all you guys have to do is just come over here and double click and it'll, it'll open up that next one for you. So, Okay, so this one right here, um, same constraint boundary as what we had before, but now our passes, our levels, we're going to start at the top of this ridge right here and work our way down. Uh, using a 0.15 step down, uh, we have our fit arcs turned on. Um, everything's all good. We'll do a simulate right, real quick here. Oh, I'm sorry. We're doing the, the bottom pockets right here. So uh, basically just told this is the top, here's the bottom, cut that area. 
Now, um, what we're going to be doing is cutting the, I think the walls this time. No, nope, we're going to finish off the floor. Oh, this is horizontal machining. Uh, we'll, we'll skip that one for uh, next week. Okay, constant Z here. So now we're going to be doing our walls. Now this is a tapered uh, end mill that we're going to be using right here. Um, now you'll see we have a pretty large step down, 10 millimeters. Well, that's because the cutter is the same angle right here. So we can actually take a much larger bite going down. So if we do a simulate here, and see we're doing basically a spiral working our way down. Getting that nice finish all the way down to the bottom there. And the stopping point of that is actually this, and zoom in here for you guys, that surface right there is our stopping point. Okay, so let's get out of this part and let's program some parts live for you guys. Now, if you guys are running across parts and you know we're gonna be talking about HSM, if you guys have parts, definitely send those over to me. I have tons and millions and millions of parts that you guys have sent to me in the past, but since they are, you know, you guys are customers art, I can't show that to the whole world without uh, you guys saying, hey, use this part for your next class. So if you guys do have parts, send those over to me and uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely get those in there because uh, kind of trying to come up uh, with parts on your own, um, you know, <laughs> it gets a little, little uh, tricky, especially on these 3D ones here. Okay. So this one right here, um, we're going to actually be covering hybrid. So what we have right here is, let's get rid of this scenes. Oh, it doesn't, it's like I have a sun just so shiny in the center. So we have a more vertical wall and then it's getting down to a flat. Now that's going to work excellent for uh, the hybrid constant Z. So it's going to take into factor that we have a vertical wall and then we have a more of a flat floor. So let's go to our... 3D tab right here, we can go ahead and click on our 3D HSM. And we are gonna switch this to hybrid constant Z. I'm gonna leave my target and all that stuff there. I'm gonna go grab my cutter. And we'll just go for that guy right now. Constraint boundaries. Looks like it remembered uh, one previous. So I have my perimeter right here. I can tell it to do external or I can say let's I want to stay internal to that area. Now my passes. So this screen is going to look a little bit different with the hybrid because now I have a step down for my Z and I also have a step over. So right here if I'm clicking on this look at the picture right here that's going to be my Z step down. Now at the bottom I also have my step over. So if you guys are using more, I'll get into another part here, I'll have a more flat floor versus a you know a rounded floor here, but I can actually have a much larger step over when it's doing the floor because we're using an, uh, a bull nose end mill and I don't really need to take those little tiny step downs or step overs because that, that end mill will cover much larger area. So we'll just do a step down of, let's just try, 20 thou, and for this particular one, I'm going to do a 20 thou for that one. And for right there, I'm just going to do save and calculate. Now, like I said, guys, you guys can come through and change your settings, but what I like to do is just get the basic in there first. Um, you guys can actually set your step down and step over a much larger number just to get some toolpath on there to see what we're looking at here. So. Right now, we're coming in here, we're doing a arc in, and like I said, a lot of these settings in our arc are already set for, you know, with, with the default values are set very well in here. So um, let's just go ahead and do a simulate here. Oh, it's got to update for my uh, roughing here. Kevin, functionality-wise, uh, you're mostly in the HSM module tonight? Yep, 
this is all HSM. So uh, if you if I'm showing you guys something that you don't have, like if you guys are uh, looking in your list, or I know a lot of you guys are, well, hopefully a lot of you guys are sitting at home, sitting on the couch relaxing right now, um, but you guys get to work tomorrow on the computer and your HSM is grayed out. Let me know, shoot me an email. Uh, we'll give you a KevCam discount for you guys to get that module turned on for you guys. So let me know if you guys don't have this module turned on. No. Kevin, again, in the 3D Pro package pretty much, correct? Correct, yep. yep. Okay, so see, let me pause it real quick here. So see how, what it does is, let me kind of get a good view of this for you guys here. Let me just turn off my tool for a second. So we have a nice even step down of that 20 thou. But you'll notice as we get down to the bottom, we're still doing that Z step down of 20 thou. But now what it's doing is it's coming back with the hybrid on the, that flat floor area, and it's going to clean up all these passes doing a 20 thou step over to still continue on that, that nice finish in there. So let's just keep playing it through, and you'll see now it's coming back through and cleaning up those areas for you, getting that nice finish. So you guys should have a pretty, um, you know, clean surface going all the way through. And we're almost blended up. So it looks like we're pretty well blended up now. And it should arc off and come out. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> this is where your uh, <clears throat> MC should know a good joke, Kevin, but I know none. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So you'll see basically what it's doing here. It's kind of coming back. Let me kind of get a wireframe of what's going on here. Um, kind of coming back through, doing our constant Z, comes back to the center, and then starts working its way out, and then it arcs off um, when it gets to that more vertical angle. So if I just change this over to constant Z, let me show you guys the difference here. Uh, we'll keep our passes still at 20 thou. Save and calculate right here. So now this is where you can really tell the difference. Let me play this through here for you guys. That roughing one is uh, killing my simulation here. And that roughing one is um, just using HSR, but you guys can definitely use uh, for your roughing, you know, HSR, uh, contour, constant Z, or I'm not sorry, uh, contour or hatch, or you guys can use the uh, 3DI machining. Now, do you guys, anybody from last week that was in the HSR classes, um, you know, was there anything that got missed for you guys in the uh, the HSR class that you want to see again or anything like that while well, we're just watching this kind of toolpath go around? Or did everybody get a good grasp on how the HSR worked? Okay. So here is our, if we're just doing constant Z, you'll see it's just doing that constant Z going down, but as we get down to that flat area, we're not going to clean up nice. So um, that's where the the hybrid comes in handy. Um, the if like I said, if you guys can just remember, the constant Z is is works ideal between 90 and 30 degrees. So once we get past that, because we're you know down over here, we're at basically zero degrees, so we're not doing a nice finish, and it's not constantly stepping down the Z. So okay. So let me, um, any questions on this part right here or the difference between um, the hybrid versus constant Z? Uh, John, oh, John, are you talking for the, 
HSR. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, definitely, I, I can definitely address that for you, John. Um, maybe we'll do another class on uh, HSR and uh, get into the more details of using. Um, now, right here we have contour, we have HM, hatch, hybrid rib, and rest rough. Um, but yeah, we can definitely dig into that a little bit more too. Okay. And Ronnie, I see that you're on now. Did Ronnie, did you get your hat and uh, t-shirt? Let me close out of this part here and not yet. It's coming. So we have another part right here that is another good example for the um, the the hybrid. So we'll do a add HSM, and we will use uh, the hybrid constant Z. Um, geometry don't have to worry about. Get a cutter here. Uh, we we'll use that bull nose constraint boundaries. Yeah, let's see what. Sorry. Okay, so it, we got a pick there, centered. Um, we can do, yeah, we can just leave it on centered. Passes, do a step down of 20, let's do it, yeah, 20. And let's, I'm just going to leave the step over at, you know, 0.2375. Uh, we are using a half inch bull nose end mill, so um, for cleaning up that flat floor, it should work. The only thing it's going to run into is where it comes down to the radius, right, excuse me, right here, and uh, we might have a little bit large of a step over because we're kind of slowly blending into the flat area. But let's just take a peek and see what we have. So I'm just going to do a save and calculate here. And like I said, guys, you'll see I'm not really going through and having to change a lot of stuff in here. Um, I said a lot of the default numbers are going to be good for you, but um, you know the option is there for you guys, though, and, and that's what I want to kind of come, cover for you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and do a simulate here. I should uh, open these parts for you guys uh, beforehand, so all the uh, the uh, stock was already updated for you guys. And I probably have my tolerance set super tight right now. Let me just take a peek at that real quick. And do we have Jeff? Is, did Jeff make it in for this class? He was this week's. And John, I did see at the top you were talking about rigid mm -hmm. tapping and thread milling. Um, let me, while we're waiting for this here, I got my channel pulled up. Here it is. And if you go to drilling, so um, John, this class right here we cover. Oh no, I'm sorry. Let's see your profile. I know we did one on drilling, and which covered the tapping, rigid tapping. Um, we had, did do a night school on thread milling. So if you go down to about two months ago, there is one on thread milling, but let me find the one on drilling for you guys. Okay, we got face mail profile, contour, pocketing. Four or five, eight. Yeah, this one right here. Uh, the night school on drilling. Uh, maybe I'll relabel this for you uh, and do drilling and tapping, but this is going to cover your drilling and tapping, how to use the rigid tapping, uh, peck tapping, um, all that stuff there. So, John, uh, if, if you have the chance to come, come here, or what I can do is if you shoot me an email, I can email you the links to these videos that cover the tapping. So.
Kev, did you catch the question about auto insert passes and the, uh, yep. Do yep. the auto? Yep. yep. We already covered that. Yeah, my audio has been in and out. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this guy through. And like I said, we're using a, a bull nose end here, end mill here. And the, if you guys have a ball end mill, definitely you guys can do that. Um, but when it comes down to that flat floor, um, it's going to be a lot easier using a, uh, f a flat floor uh, bottom end mill versus a, a ball end mill. Now, one thing what we could do too for you guys is um, let's just say that you know we didn't want to touch that floor. What we can do is just tell it to do a delta of you know five thou and it will stay off that floor. But now you'll see, you know, we have a nice finish coming down. But then when it gets to that flat four, I can't talk anymore. Flat floor, it's going to do a much larger step over. Um, let me just do a. Uh, host CAD for you guys and uh, so you can see we have a much larger step over versus you know when we're doing our constant Z on our wall using the side of our end mill versus the bottom of our end mill so does that kind of make sense for everybody the difference between like hybrid and constant Z and when you would use constant Z versus hybrid any questions on this particular part right here because I do got uh, couple more parts to uh, show you guys. Okay. Let me close out of this one. And okay, we did cavity. Okay, so this one right here. Um, let me just delete this operation. So we have everything kind of roughed out right here. Uh, using HSR contour roughing. Um, let me turn that off and let's go ahead and add our HSM. Now I'm going for this one I'm going to use constant Z and what I want to do is grab our cutter. Let's see we have a 0.75 and we have a let's see, that guy constraint boundaries already on there we'll do centered again now passes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it to cut anything between the recommended value 0 and 30 degrees using a step down of yeah, we can do 10 thou here save and calculate oh shoot I forgot to uh, pick my levels but we should be good because it should pick up that angle range for it Okay, so basically it's going to do a constant Z step down until it gets to that specific angle of 30 degrees um, right there. So if we do a simulate here, solid verify, let me check my settings real quick because uh, it's already updating. Here's the old. That might be something. <laughs> yeah, that might be, something, that might be something to talk about too is just, uh, you know, how to speed up simulation. Yeah. So right now, you guys can see that we're it's you know doing little tiny passes. So if I go to my settings here, accuracy. Yeah, I'm set to in the millions here. So I'm just do a one thou here. Okay. And whoop, let me just exit out and then get back in there. And see how much faster that updated now for me. So I'm not going millions in my. Uh, um, my settings and this accuracy right here is just visual for you guys it's not going to change how the, the parts machine it's just how accurate this solid verification is now if you guys want to skip steps um, that's under the general and right now I'm telling it to just show me every one step but I can tell it to show me every hundred steps or every hundred line segments and you'll see that we're going down much faster now
So it went all the way down to where the, the side hit the 30 degrees and then it basically just stopped. Um, now if I wanted to finish that floor all in one, then I can come over to my hybrid constant Z, um, come over to my passes, and what do I have a 10 thou, actually we can pray, it's pretty fine, uh, do a 20 thou and then I can do a step over of you know, 250 thou. calculating tool path. Now when it's doing this calculation, it is using multi-core of your, your processor, of your computer. So the more cores that you guys have on your computer, the faster everything is going to calculate for you guys. Okay, so now you'll see we came down the floor and then we got to basically our zero flat floor area and then it increased that step over to the 250 thou versus doing a 20 thou step over on that that floor so um, you know it's definitely a, a nice feature if you guys are going from a you know tapered angle area down to a flat floor and you guys don't want to break it off into using uh, constant Z and you know let's say a pocket operation or a um, horizontal uh, operation um, that way you guys can kind of keep it all combined together so um, you got constant Z and then hybrid, which is, you know, basically horizontal machining and constant Z combined into one for you guys. So, like I said, we're going to go through all these for you guys, and I want you guys to know this as much as I know it and to answer any questions you guys have. So, so uh, Eric just asked, uh, when is constant Z better than hybrid? Constant Z, um, you know, if if we just had a taper on a on an area, so let's just say, let me turn off that tool path. Let me s just do a edit part and chamfer. Let's see if I can get this for you guys. So there is a good spot where you would just use constant Z, just on a angle surface and that's it. There's no flat floor at the bottom. Um, there's nothing go going down. It's a, you know, 45 degrees. Um, even if this was, you know, 70 degrees, anything, like I said, between 30 and 90 degrees. So right here, if we just did a 3D HSM, and we will go to our, grab our tool real quick. Constraint boundaries. I'm actually going to do selected faces. Just click on that face that I want to cover. Oh, define. Sorry. I have to do drive surface there. Now, if you do the check surfaces, that's the areas that you don't want it to touch. So just like HSS, the check surfaces are areas you don't want to touch. The drive surface is the area that you want to cut. Um, we can do, whoop, I'm still on hybrid here. Get to constant Z here. Passes and 10,000. And definitely have a large tool here, so let me go. So you can see we're taking little tiny step downs here, cleaning off that surface with that cutter. And that's, this is the areas that you just use constant Z, like I said, without a floor, those more vertical walls. So hopefully that answers your question, Eric. Any other questions, guys? That's about uh, all I can think of right now with HSM, constant Z, and hybrid. Um, and like I said, 3D is, is a completely different animal, you know, um, you know, for 
between the, the 2D stuff to the 3D, you know, 2D, yep, this is where you should use a face mill, um, where when you guys get into 3D stuff, you know, you got a really complex mold, um, you know, maybe constant Z is going to work better on, on certain areas, or constant Z hybrid, or um, honestly, my favorite one in here for doing molds is the combined constant Z with uh, linear machining. And like I said, we'll cut, we'll cover that in the class right there. But um, you know, it all depends on the surface that you guys are cutting, or the angles, or you know, what three D surface that you guys are trying to cut there. So, any questions, guys? Anything? Anything? Looks Quiet like group, Kev. Yeah, I guess so. Hopefully we didn't put you guys to sleep and you, you learned something. <laughs> but um, with that being said, guys, thanks again for taking the time out of your night to, um, you know, watch these night classes. And like I said, these are totally, you know, solely dedicated for you guys on, you know, getting you guys more proficient with the software. Uh, just trying to go above and beyond for you guys and, you know, show you guys, um, you know, when I, when I know you're not busy at work and you don't have the boss breathing down your neck and, um, you can just sit there and watch it from your tablet or your phone or, you know, watch it on your TV if you want. Um, but, uh, like I said, thanks for taking the time out of the night. Um, if, and, uh, you know, I always want to kind of show this slide at the end. You know, you guys have that uh, buddy down the street. We do have that tell a friend program. Um, you know, so, and if you guys do have ideas on getting the word out about solid cam, you know, let us know, um, you know, we're, social media or, you know, let us know what we can do to uh, get out there. But, you know, like I said, this is one of our programs to kind of tell your buddies on how good it is and you guys get rewarded with a little bit of a bonus there for you guys. So. Perfect. Uh, Kev, you'll record this and pop it up on your uh, YouTube yep. channel too, right? Yep. This will, this has been all recorded for you guys. So um, if you guys need to rewatch it or kind of come back to it, definitely uh, come to the the YouTube channel. Um, it will be up here at about uh, 1 30 in the morning East uh, Central Time. Um, but if you guys have questions, I, I can't have, you know, get this enough to you guys is email me. If you guys have questions, just shoot me an email. I got my email on me all the time. If you guys are working the weekends, you have an emergency come up, shoot me an email. Um, the email never goes away unless I'm off in Timbuktu with no cell service. So. <laughs> I will try to answer your questions as soon as I can. So, but Steve, you got anything else before right. we wrap it up here? Nope, nope. I think that does it, Kev. Uh, I'll just thank everybody again for the time and uh, being a customer of ours, and uh, we appreciate you all. You bet. All right, guys. Have a wonderful night, and we will see you guys next week for the more HSM. All right, bye, Perfect. guys. Thanks, Kev. <laughs>